It is my great pleasure to commence the day by introducing the Honourable Hugh Delahunty, the Minister for Veteran Affairs, to speak. Minister Delahunty has been an elected member of Parliament since 1999 and commenced representing the community of Wimmera. He has been the Minister for Veteran Affairs since December 2010 and my short time with the Veterans Council, I have witnessed his dedication and commitment to the veteran community. The Minister for Veteran Affairs, thank you. Thank you, Laureen. Can I uh, start today's uh, proceedings by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land we're on and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I also recognise and honour the Honourable Ted Bardew, the Chair of the Victorian Centenary of Anzac Committee, Roland Perry, members of the Victorian Anzac Centenary Committee, members of the Victorian Veterans Council, distinguished guests, and I particularly recognise my parliamentary colleagues, I know many of them are here today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends one and all, I've also just been passed a note that Mary Warlick has just arrived as the US Consul General. I really welcome her also today. Thank you for joining us on this important occasion in the lead up to the Anzac Centenary. As Lorraine said, I'm the Minister for Veterans Affairs in Victorian Parliament and uh, I'm pretty proud of the work that's been done by parliaments before my time, but in particular and since my time, the, the work of my staff, the, particularly the departmental staff, but also the community in general. There's a lot of ex-service organisations, local councils, groups right across Victoria, school groups, and everyone is doing a lot of work in relation to honouring and remembering our veterans that have gone before us. But this is a very special occasion, the centenary of Anzac, which will start in August this year. Today marks a significant step in working together with our key partners to ensure that all Victorians, no matter their age, location or cultural background, can connect with their own local Anzac stories and commemorate this important historical milestone, which, as I said before, starts in August this year. The Victorian Government is committed to educating and engaging with the broader community to remember the service and sacrifice of our World War servicemen and women and those who have followed them who have helped shape this fantastic state of Victoria and a great country we live in Australia. The government believes in making the Anzac Centenary marking, I should say, the government believes in marking the Anzac Centenary in ways in which are meaningful to Victorian communities which help create a lasting legacy for future generations. So this is why we come together today. The speakers you will hear from today will share their knowledge, their thoughts, their ideas and importantly the inspirations around marking the Anzac Centenary. They will explain why they personally believe the Anzac Centenary is important and how you and how you can help us in it, or help work within your community to research their own World War I stories and their connections, whether it be a family or community connection. In turn, we trust that you will go away today inspired and better informed about what the Victorian Government and others around our state are doing to commemorate the centenary. And how you can join in our efforts to help share the Victorians' World War I stories, not only within your community but across the state. World War I had a defining impact on the state and the families who, whose loved ones who served. Approximately 114,000 people from around Victoria enlisted in the Great War and of them 19,000 19, made the ultimate sacrifice. Victoria's contribution to the war effort affected families, it affected communities and profoundly shaped the subsequent development of our state. 100 years on, Victoria will join our counterparts around the world and in, particularly in Australia, this great state, I mean great country of Australia, in marking this important occasion. It is our hope that the next four years will inspire Victorians to learn about the service of their forebears and to make connections with the descendants of their family or their other families who shared in shaping the Anzac legacy. Through education, participation and commemoration, Victorians can better understand how World War I not only shaped the face of Victoria, 
but helped shape the Anzac legend that we know so well today. I am proud of the important work that's been done by the Victorian Anzac Centenary Committee and most of those people are here today. I'm also pleased and I thank the committee for the work they're doing uh, through the chair of Ted Badu and the efforts that they're going to ensuring that we share Victoria's stories and make World War I connections and ensure that the baton of remembrance is passed on to future generations in Victoria. One of the key things, and I know Brian is here to speak to us as a young participant in this year's Premier Spirit of Anzac Prize. These are young people that get the opportunity to travel to significant war sites around the world. Next year they're going to Lemnos in Greece, to Gallipoli and to the Western Front. And this is a great opportunity for them to learn about the, our history, but importantly pass that on to their colleagues, their friends at school and to the wider community. And uh, you'll hear from Claire Chisholm later in the afternoon. Claire was the original recipient of the Premier Spirit of Anzac Prize and she also sits with, the, with Ted on the Centenary of Anzac Committee. So it's about how we engage with those younger generations. But importantly, at the centre of our government's commitments around the Anzac Centenary is our $45 million Galleries of Remembrance project at the Shrine. It is near incompletion, and I'm sure Dennis Bagley, who's the CEO there, will might give you some more information about what's going on down there. But the Galleries of Remembrance will honour the Australian servicemen and women of all wars and peacekeeping operations throughout the story of Australian war history. But it also focuses on individual and unit stories of Victorian service and sacrifice. Today, I'm really proud to announce that the Anzac Centenary Major Grants Program will open this week. I'm sure there's people who will be interested to know how they can access that type of funding. But this Major Grants Program will provide grants from $20,000 up to $100,000 for projects that commemorate the service and sacrifice of veterans from the First World War. The details can be found on the Victorian, on the Veterans Affairs website, and uh, I've been seeing it up on the screen here, and there's other Twitter and also Facebook connections there for you. But importantly, as I finish, other key state government ANZAC centenary projects include the digitisation of World War I soldiers' settlements records, and I know I was up at uh, Robin Bar when we launched that program. The State Library publication a book about Victoria's involvement in the war. And the Anzac Centenary Community Grants Program. You will notice in the handout you've been given today that you will receive, there is more information about the various state government grants available as part of the Anzac Centenary commemorations. And I have to say there's other, I mean, other grants programs that, which have been continuing on, which can assist in upgrading honour boards or memorials, but we particularly through the Anzac Centenary one, we're focusing on World War I. So again, I trust that today's Anzac Centenary seminar provides you with some more information, but inspires you to join us in engaging with your local community, your local family, or your local organisation to commemorate those who have serviced and so sacrificed so much in World War I. So again, thanks for joining with us today. Hope you have a very fulfilling, productive day and uh, I enjoy hearing the outcomes of it all. I can't stay all day, but I know there is, uh, they're going to video this, so I'll be able to get a, an update on what happens. But again, congratulations for coming right across Victoria. I know there's a lot of people here from various organisations. It's a real thrill to kick off the program for you all. Have a great day.